Hello and welcome to Afterlife Topics and Metaphysics. Uh, this is Cyrus coming at you with a special guest star tonight, which is the continual street noises of Manila, Philippines that just goes on and on and on. Honking and barking and yelling and shouting and motorbikes and tricycles and the whole deal. Uh, police whistling, doing the uh, traffic whistles. This continues on into the night. Fortunately, when I need to sleep, I just hit that fan, put it on full blast, and I sleep just fine. But comes with traveling around Southeast Asia. With that out of the way, uh, tonight, as a bit of a follow-up to the last video talking about materialization and conjuration of items, I want to talk a little bit about the broader topic of what we call magic, magical ability. And by the way, this is Afterlife Topics and Metaphysics, where we talk about this kind of crazy, paranormal, supernatural, metaphysical type of things. If you like that kind of stuff, if that's your cup of tea, then I invite you to please hit the subscribe button down below. The big red button, you may need to be logged into your Gmail account to see it, as well as uh, the notification bell, and uh, give the video a share if you think that people on the old Facebook page might find it interesting as well. So I want to talk about the idea of magic in context to specifically worlds we find ourselves in after we kick the bucket, after we're dead. As an out-of-body explorer, I recognize that the place I end up in most of the time when I'm having an out-of-body experience is the same place that a majority of people, a majority of earthlings find themselves in once they die. They go toward the light, Dead loved ones come and greet them. Maybe they meet with God. They have the life review, all that stuff we hear about in the near-death experiences. And then when that's all said and done, they kind of get placed where they're meant to be placed, where they'd be most comfortable. And most of the time, that is the astral counterpart to the world we're in right now, a dimension that is startlingly similar to where we are right now, living, breathing, as solid, as physical as this one, on one vibrational density higher than the planet we're on right now. And it looks like this place, smells like this place, feels like this place, but there's a lot of uh, extra dimensional differences that are immediately apparent when you begin your life on that side. And the most apparent is the ability to at least have some level of manipulation of the environment using uh, your thoughts, your mind. And in our culture, when we watch films about this, whether that's like Harry Potter or old episodes of Bewitched or the whole fantasy genre, we refer to this as magic. Magic is the ability to use the mind to influence the world around you. And in pop culture, sometimes magic includes a kind of pre-programmed system so that magician imprints on reality like a a condition a piece of programming code that other people can tap into to be able to access that so somebody creates a spell which basically means that they've written a code into the fabric of reality and then when somebody else accesses that code it's like very little work is required now now they've just created a fireball now they've just created a they just summoned a cat whatever it might be so that is sort of in pop culture what magic is when we have like a spellcaster a wizard and this idea is so prevalent in our culture i think it's one of those situations where i'm not so sure this idea is just coming out of our imaginations i think that it's a reflection of things that are common on the middle astral level now, I say this because I've specifically heard people refer to the manipulation of matter, the, ma the manipulation of the environment on the astral plane as being magic. They're like, hey, check that guy out. He's doing some magic. And when you hear somebody saying that on that side, no, it's not somebody doing card tricks. It's somebody like this lady in the background creating this big swirling ball of light about to do something, about to cast some spell, throw some fireball at some poor sucker, or materialize something, or who knows what it might be. But that's what people are able to do on that side. 
and I'd be willing to bet there's a lot of people who are in love with the idea of sorcerers and sorceresses and magicians and wizards and spell spell crafting and the whole thing who have basically carried those principles that we've created through our fantasy artwork and through our stories and things of that nature they've carried that with them into the middle astral plane so you better believe that there's wizards and warlocks and the whole thing on that side and so that just illuminates a little bit about the possibilities of life on that side how it is a lot more dynamic than life on this side to couple that with the fact that people can use these kinds of abilities to get rid of pesky things like aging so when you're on that side once you meet people who have a bit of knowledge about their consciousness and their mind the ability to affect the environment they're often very beautiful looking because they quickly learn how to look their most beautiful, how to affect reality in such a way to optimize the way they look. Meanwhile, on that side, you'll meet plenty of blue collar folks who don't know anything about that. You'll meet people working in restaurants, working in gas stations, just hanging out, doing their thing, just, just like on this density level. And they pretty much look like how they looked when they died. And I don't mean like in the sixth sense way, like they have a, they have a big, like, pickaxe stuck to their head uh, i mean that as in they look about the age they did when they passed maybe a little bit younger because they're automatically going to be in good health their astral body is not going to be corrupted like our bodies can be so regardless people are going to look better on that side but they're not going to be uh, necessarily looking beautiful unless they kind of learn that skill and develop and have the motivation to do that so something that frustrates a lot of us out of body types of people is that we we explore that side and then we realize how many people are just they, they die and they remain closed-minded like you'll maybe even meet people with physical diseases that carry on to that side because they never gained the basic consciousness skills to get rid of those diseases because they're just so set in their ways. So an old lady with arthritis passes away here, appears on that side, and he, she's still an old lady with arthritis. She doesn't even think anything happened because that world can look, feel, and seem exactly like this world. And so they just go about their business and they don't even realize what their potential is. I know some authors like William Bullman were really frustrated by that. I think Bullman talked about how he was in, might have been astral China, and he was horrified to see all the uh, communist-looking block condominiums filled with people just clueless about the nature of their reality now and just basically continuing the world we're in now. For me, on the other hand, this doesn't bother me so much. I know it bothers some of these people, and they're just disgusted by like these low-level souls like you just can't get it together but I don't see it that way I see people are on their own path in life and for some reason you know some people want to keep things the way they are they don't want to rock the boat sometimes it's because they have loved ones like they have a life that they love and decide and maybe they're maybe they're old but they were with their deceased loved you know their their significant other who passed away with them and you know they liked watching football and having barbecues and hanging out and just doing their own thing and they don't have any reason to get all fancy and I don't judge them for that I think I just think it's kind of funny to see it and it also creates a nice contrast because I don't think that the middle astral would be even as interesting if everybody was this sorcerer you know this beautiful sorceress able to manipulate reality and cast spells and do all those types of things it, that's a select group of people and I feel like in life you need balance so sometimes you know you need the good with the bad, you need the ugly with the beautiful. It keeps that kind of sense of contrast going on. And so again, it's always perplexing to me some of these authors who don't want that balance. They just want it all one way. I really like that diversity. That's why I'm in glorious Manila, Philippines right now because there's a lot of contrast here. The people are really friendly and really nice, but like at the same time, I mean, it's kind of a third world country. Um, yet even that being said, there's things here that are way nicer than like Los Angeles, California in certain ways. And then in other ways, there's things that are much more ugly, shall we say. But it creates a nice contrast. And especially artists love the contrast too, right? So a little bit of light, a little bit of dark. 
I guess I'm going on a tangent, but the big point of this video is that it seems like magic as we think of it here does exist on that side. Light magic, dark magic, the whole thing. You have beautiful people who are able to change their form, shape shift, become what they want, look like how they want, and manipulate reality. And uh, you'll meet these types of people on the astral plane, and it's, a, it's very interesting. It's one of the major differences, one of the biggest things that you'll notice once you're dead is how uh, you have people like that on that side things you, so you'll see things you just would never see here imagine walking down the street and seeing a non-human creature walking around like a non-human person like a different race a, a fairy or a, or a demoness or a, um, a centaur or something some mythical creature like you'll, you'll see unexpected crazy wild things that you'll never see here once you're dead and i am saying once you're dead because i have some bad news you're going to die it might not be tomorrow but it could be tomorrow and you're going to find yourself in a world like this and then you're going to think back to that video you saw on youtube that got they got like a hundred hits some you know some nobody on youtube talking about this kind of stuff you thought was ridiculous and then once you're dead you're going to think back about that ridiculous guy you watched on youtube and you're like wait a second that guy, I, th I think, I think he was onto something. You know, I, I mean, it was just one silly video on YouTube, and I, I never saw the guy again. But I remember, you know, I remember he was talking about this. That's what happened. I'm, I'm dead, and I'm in, like, a different world. It looks like where I just was, but things are different. I, I get it now. So maybe that'll happen. And if that does happen, you're welcome to contact me from the other side and leave me some feedback. The old, uh, you can hit an astral Amazon and, and leave a book review. All right, this is Cyrus. Speaking of that, you don't have to die to read my books. You can check out Understanding Life After Death and The Afterlife and Beyond on Amazon. Possibly your local Barnes & Noble. You can call in first to see if they have it stock on the metaphysical aisle. Those books go into a lot of detail that I'm proud to say other books typically do not about what it's like to die and where we really go. We don't become just floating orbs of light in some cosmic galactic soup. We go to a very real and solid world like this one. You can join the group Afterlife Topics and Metaphysics or get involved in the classes. All those links are in the video description by clicking on Show More. And I'll see you all on the next video.